This is Jeff Timberell, Director of the Southwest Florida Real Estate Investment Association. Here to talk about uh, Real World Real Estate Investing Part 1. This is going to be the first video in a longer series of videos. This mirrors presentations we have been doing in the Southwest Florida RIA for the last three months. Disclosure, we're sharing our own experiences and knowledge with you. Please do your own due diligence before utilizing anything here. This is not to be construed as investment advice, and you should seek competent counsel before trying this at home. Uh, in the past three years, uh, we've assisted and advised and had ownership interests in several private equity entities that employed over $14 million in the capital in the Florida market, which gave us not only unique insight as to the amount of business we've done, it also gave us some great insight into how institutionalized investors uh, employ capital. Number one, the key to being successful is to understand what you're there to do. In my opinion, this is the most important thing. There's so many people running around the world. There's a lot of people wanting to run around and try and do real estate investing. They take courses, they read books, they go to meetings, but they really don't know what they're there to do. They really haven't spent that, that critical time understanding what you're here to do, what's your mission, what's your goals. I mean, without having any goals, it's, it's hard to achieve any goals, if that makes any sense. From our experience, the clearer the plan you have, you will be able to operate with a margin of safety. And that's the key word in this business, a margin of safety, because the ones that survive last and grow true wealth are the ones that don't make mistakes or make mistakes that you can recover from. Investing in real estate. Investment is the purchase of an asset or an item with the hope that it will generate income or appreciate in the future and be sold at a higher price. Keyword, the future for investing. So what does that mean? The act of committing capital to an endeavor with the expectation of obtaining an additional income and or profit. That's what investing is. Something uh, I've learned over the years is kind of like a narrative. It's a why in the road uh, when you're talking to somebody that's in real estate. Uh, are they a trader or are they an investor? Investors buy and hold. Uh, they get a return from the assets they own. Traders wholesale. Uh, traders fix and flip. Nothing wrong with it. I do it. I've done it uh, in the past. I'm trying to do it again today. I'm doing a marketing campaign as we speak, uh, looking for uh, contracts to wholesale. With that said, it's two different narratives and even two different valuation processes, investor versus trader. You need to recognize the difference between the two. Basic questions for an investor. How much capital are you employing? What's your desired rate of return? When are you going to need this capital back? And then what's your risk tolerance? Those four questions are how you determine what you're there to do. Then we'll talk about capital. There's an opportunity cost of capital, and particularly when you're raising capital, which I've been part of some private equity raises, you really need to understand what other opportunities are out there for investors because generally you're, you know, why would you why would you buy a piece of real estate that pays you two percent a year? with all the headaches associated with that when you can if you could at the same time own a CD at five with none of the headaches. Give you a chart on 10-year T-bills talk about opportunity cost. Uh, you can really see the uh, recession the Lehman Brothers crash really killed yields but it's killed yields no matter what I mean pretty much at the time I'm talking about this yields for a 10-year T-bill are bouncing between 2.6 and 2.8 percent that's a terrible yield particularly with the amount of money they're printing and you go back 10 years and this is why in investment real estate has become so popular because it's one of the few places you can get a yield here's CD rates from 1984 on and if you notice about early 2000s everybody got excited about real estate and that's because the CD rates of return just continued to go down so right now uh, my God, on a one-year CD, uh, you're getting a, not even a percent. Uh, that's That makes real estate attractive, and that's something to watch as well. As CD rates and other rates on financial instruments go up, real estate may not appear as sexy, particularly to an investor who bought in the, uh, in the valley and bought right and has quite a bit of uh, gain on the table. So opportunity costs in the real world. We already kind of talked about this. 
Most investors we know are looking for at least 6% a year. I know guys that are even looking for 15, and that's a cash on cash, not an internal rate of return. That would be a whole nother video that could be a whole day's worth understanding the difference between the two. But what here I'm talking about is a yearly cash on cash return. And you gotta be mindful of unrealistic expectations. Uh, I've seen people that, that have pitched 30% returns, and I've seen investors that are looking for 30% returns. And it's really hard to do. There's a lot of randomness and a lot of happenstance, and you're going to lose a lot more than you're going to win when you're dialing up those kind of deals. Unrealistic turns, uh, returns can lead to bad decision making because you seem to be chasing the uh, golden goose instead of chasing a stable investment that pays you to own it. Let's talk about risk tolerance. These are two great quotes by uh, Warren Buffett. And risk tolerance is really age dependent and your financial situation dependent as well. But here's a great quote. Look at the market fluctuations as your friend rather than your enemy. Profit from folly rather than participate in it. And, and that's most real estate investors, uh, you're supposed to be a contrarian. I, I kind of put the world in, you're either a salmon or you're a lemming. You're either running with the crowd or you're running against the crowd. And here's another great one. The main danger is that the timid or beginning investor will enter the market at a time of extreme exuberance and then become disillusioned when the paper losses occur. The key is to not panic and do math-based risk assessments and then math-based evaluations and then sit down and decide what you're doing. You could have bought a home in Cape Coral, Florida at the height of the market at 320 and paid cash, held it all the way through the crash and still got a better rate of return than CDs and it's a terrible investment because your basis is so high. Or if you trade it out, you would literally be losing money but it's sad that but you actually would have outperformed the CD and and that's kind of a interesting thing we did some case studies uh, of people that had bought at the top and had they held and if they had mortgages and I think that video is on our YouTube channel as well thanks for watching you can always check out our website at swflreia.com there should be a link at the bottom of this video uh, if you're on our website, put yourself on our mailing list. Uh, we send out a lot of foreclosure information. We send out our meeting notices, and we also, from time to time, send out information like this. I hope this information is useful to you. I make it a great day.